Hey, welcome to We Build Stuff. Today I'm going to take a saw blade and use the CNC to make a little sign out of it. So I guess they advertise it as a 10 inch blade, but it's really more like uh, nine and seven eighths, which we would call 9.875. I'm taking little things like that into account where the hole is in the center when I'm doing my design so that when I plasma cut, it doesn't actually start going and overlap and cut anything here. In Adobe Illustrator, I've drawn the main outside shape on its own layer. That's at the very bottom here. I can turn that on and off, which includes the guides that help me center it. You can see those here. There's two guides that helps me see where the middle of this is, and my circle shape, which represents the entire diameter, the whole size of that blade. Inside there, I've got layers that we've created that have the words which are now created as outlines because you can't just send a font to the plasma cutter. See, no font. This is an actual set of shapes. I used a stencil font so that there would be nothing floating in midair. One of the things I did have to edit, I found this little picture online of a hammer and a saw that was originally like that. I took that into Illustrator, got it traced out, sized, to make that work. Now I'm taking into account there's a hole in the middle, line, line, line here that we're in the blade, and I'm gonna guess that from about here to here is where the blade, or the actual uh, teeth are. So there should be that space. So I've arranged all that here into two separate main layers. There's a placement layer and a cut layer. Inside the cut layer is all everything that I'm gonna be wanting to cut, and because I'm not gonna be actually cutting out the circle part, I only actually wanna keep those I'm setting these up so that they are going to be an inside offset type of cut. That'll make sense once we get over to the uh, plasma cutter computer. So I've exported that as a DXF file uh, and it is 9.875 inches diameter. Now we're over here. I'm going to add a new part. I've already loaded that up here. And it does show the outer circle the inside shape and all that. And I've set my job options up here. So they are set at 9.875, 9.875. My material thickness is about an eighth of an inch or equivalent of 10 gauge. And I'm not cutting out this outside, just the inside. You can see all those little fairly intricate shapes. We're gonna see how this works. I'm gonna go up here to Operation Plasma Cut. And here I have the option of which layer am I cutting? Am I cutting my circle or outside shape? No, I'm only doing my cut layer. I'm doing an inside offset, not an outside. You can see how that's the cutter going around a line versus inside. We'll cut inside the shapes that I've created. I'm using tool number T6, 10 gauge, and I'm gonna be changing my feed speed in my uh, CNC software later. My lead ins and outs, I'm just doing just under a quarter of an inch. Okay, that's gonna generate some tool paths. There's, it says here there's a little bit of an error. Well, it's green, so I'm happy that that's gonna get cut. It's just not gonna hit those little corners there. You can see the lead ins and outs based on those little uh, arcs that go in, but I'm happy with that. Once that's done, I can generate the code as a G code or tap. Go into Mach 3, I can load that code, and that shows up here without the circle. Now I have to make sure that the bottom left-hand corner here lines up with where I want it to start. So I've set some rulers up here, just around the blade, and this is supposed to represent where I want my 0, 0, 0 to go. I've got that lined up, about as precise as I can get it, lined up with that ruler, lined up with that ruler, and this should all be centered based on my code now. I'm gonna do a dry run, click, and press run just to make sure that everything's actually gonna line up on my blade. So while that's running, I'm just going to sit and watch because I don't want to leave and then realize that, whoops, it actually started cutting out here. If this was a 30 minute cut, I probably wouldn't stay this long. Almost done. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to guess that that was pretty centered. Let's actually do the cut now. Clear the table so that, you know, I don't accidentally uh, turn this into four rulers instead of two. Ventilation. Let's trap all that smoke inside, shall we? Okay, I've started running this, turned off dry run. Cut seems to be going good so far. So it's just slowly running through all the code, making its cuts. All right, there we go, all done. That is uh, pretty centered. Now it's gotta go grind off some of the slag. The material is a little bit thinner than I thought it was, uh, so it's not quite as fine of details I was hoping, but this is still going to make a nice wall hanger. I'm going to grind this up now. Next, I'm just going to add a little washer on the back side of it so that you can hang this on a wall with a nail or a screw. Just like that, enough, uh, kind of like the back of a picture frame. Yeah, got a little bit sooty after, even though I'd cleaned the metal prior, so I'm going to just quickly sandblast it. to get painted anyways there's the back there's the front so that was just a very quick video on how to cut something out of the plasma cutter that was you know already in a specific shape I just had to take some measurements do a little bit of design in Adobe Illustrator or whatever software you might have Inkscape AutoCAD some sort of drawing software hardest part is just kind of measuring it up so that it all worked out have a great day. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, all those things that the regular people say. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.